What's up guys, Mr. Slen here with another fan dem review. If you want your dem review, please submit it at our community Discord channel, discord.gg slash Mr. Slen. Today we're reviewing Clin, who is a mid medic in ETF2L season 28. He says, here's a demo from an official, just want positioning tips and other stuff. Uber counting is pretty good, but the small stuff I need to nail down. While we won this map, it should have been far less close. And Clin, I really appreciate a player who submits a demo where they win and still wants to learn. That's pretty good too. Uh, obviously, you're not going to play every match perfect, but it's great that you're trying to learn from the wins as well as the losses. So we're going to hop into this match here. It is on CP Gullywash. And I always got to remember that in Europe, you guys don't have anti-cheat. <laughs> so you guys are playing on just uh, your own servers or whatever you're doing. So uh, this is a medic demo review, by the way, guys. Uh, even though he's on scout for the beginning of the game, he's now on medic. And he's running Kritzkrieg to middle. What a beast. First round Kritzkrieg. I like that, actually. It's uh, it, it can catch the enemy team on surprise. I know Shade does that a lot when he plays his matches. And right away, running up to your top left side. This is all good stuff here. Taking a lot of damage, though. I would have wished that you grabbed the health pack behind you in the in the choke to give yourself a little bit more buffer here. You're kind of grabbing it now, but at this point, it's when your team wants to be winning and closing out that mid-fight. And you had to slow things down, not heal your teammates, back up and get that pack. So if you would have gotten that pack earlier, I would have much preferred that. Now it looks like you're climbing, what? You're, you're, you've lost. You've definitely 100% lost, but you're looking to take an, a greedy Kritzkrieg back in. Oh my God, that's so greedy. That is way too greedy, unnecessarily greedy. And I'm gonna pause right there. Uh, maybe I'm not. Uh, oh, I don't like POVs because they always reset my, my config. So I, I'm not a big fan of taking the Kritzkrieg in there because you guys already lost. Like. It doesn't matter if you have Uber or Crits Creek. If you are two versus four, for example, you're going to lose the next fight. It doesn't matter. So one thing you can do is pop the Crits Creek off, force their Uber, and then recharge your Crits Creek faster than them. However, that's extremely risky play because in order for you to use the Crits Creek onto them without a demo man, like you got to use it on a scout here, you got to be really close to them and they can just Uber on you and kill you. So I'm not a big fan of that play, actually. I would have preferred to see you um, play further back. Uh, now, maybe I read that situation wrong and their medic died. But I think he has Uber right now. So I think you're in a really bad spot. Yes, it looks like you're trying to force their medic right now at the choke. Um, I, whenever we first start watching the demo, I, I don't know who the medic's names are. So it's, it's a struggle for me to figure that out. Looks like they popped into you. You're getting completely caught out of the choke. This is terribly bad for you and you're dead. All right, that is definitely a mistake. So what should you have done in, in hindsight? Well, first thing you do, get to middle, get the health pack. Second thing you do, push across with your team. Third thing you do, if you're pushing across is not working and you're losing, get the hell out of there and leave. Just completely leave. Back up into last point. I'm not even joking. On a map like Gullywash, you back up into last point and you just sit there. And then when your teammates respawn, then you push back out to second point and Chris Creek on them on second point. Don't try and do anything funny because now you're in a bad situation. Look how terrible the situation is for you. You know their medic stayed alive. They have uber advantage. They're just going to shove last. Oh, they killed your engineer too? Oh, no. <laughs> so that's just, that's just kind of like the pains of learning. Like that is 100% a mistake. When they uber into you and you die, that is 100% a mistake. And I, I, I hate to like rub it in your face and be like, oh, man, you made a mistake. But uh, see, now they're going to uber into you at last point. And there's not a whole lot you can do about it. Your heavy's going to die. You already lost your engineer earlier. Your scout respawns, but they're camping your spawn door. You can't get out there. And now they're going to capture last point and you lost the round. So definitely do not want to get be ca getting caught out by their Uber. Uh, and that is the danger of running Kritzkrieg in the first round. Because if you lose the mid, now you're in a bad spot where uh, you have to use a Kritzkrieg defensively. And no one wants to be on defense with a Kritzkrieg. So, into the second mid-fight we go. And already their demo man is nailing some nasty stickies on you. You gotta just gotta you just gotta go for it. You just need to walk through there. Yeah. Don't let that guy stop you from climbing. Oh, uh, he's throwing damage at your team, but you're doing a great job of dodging it, actually. You're doing an amazing job here. You're doing so good. This is really good. Keep healing your scouts. Fuck your demo man. He doesn't need heals. That scout up there who's who's taking damage on the point, he needs the heals. Yes, exactly. Put it on to him. You guys need to continue pushing because you have number advantage. Don't stop the party. Keep it rolling. Tell your scout behind you with the party hat to capture mid, which he's he's not doing. So one scout needs to cap mid. The other one pushes forward. The one that's healthier pushes forward. 
takes the buff, runs up to the second point, and starts capping there. You guys are putting a time six, and never do this thing. Right here, where you're just standing still above here, they can run a sniper and sniper head off. I, I can't hit tab right now, so maybe uh, maybe you're counting something that I'm not counting. But like I typically just highly recommend you do not stand still there on a, a second point like that, uh, just because they can run a sniper, run it up river, and then snipe your head off from this high ground like this. So now you know you have uber advantage. Uh, you should be able to just take it into last with a scout and win the round. And here it is. You pop the uber, turn around, flash your pocket soldier. Uh, looks like I miscounted. They have uber. They pop uber. This is bad. Uh-oh. Running out. Uh-oh, trying to backtrack. Kal2 dies. This is good. Uh, you have a number advantage. Now you want to repush. I love that you're healing scouts here. Continue doing that. Yes, you get another pick. Heals back on the scouts. Get the hit. Yes, nice. Oh my god. I'm so excited for you. <laughs> I'm so excited for you. Is it just me or is this like demo lagging a little bit? So maybe I get the feeling you're not playing on the world's best computer. But either way, that was a good round. Um, I really like how you played that last push. Where you like took it in, you realize they have Uber, you didn't overcommit your body, you get a pick, you repush with your scouts. It was really, really good. Uh, I highly recommend that on the rollout, your pocket soldier stays to the left or the right side of the door, not in the middle, so that way the uh, roaming soldier doesn't eat your arrow. Uh, I like that you're trying for the crossbow twice, because sometimes you're going to miss, so you go for it again, which is the right call. However, work with your teammates. Your teammates need to be standing still or walking in straight lines to make it easier for you to hit that crossbow on them. That's a, that's a problem that, that people have even at the highest levels of the game. Like, people just need to walk in straight lines, make it easy to hit the arrow. Uh, I want to see you putting heals on your scouts. If you show up to a mid-fight and all of your heavy classes are hurt, and you haven't had a chance to heal your scouts in the first three seconds of middle, you're in trouble. You've probably already lost mid. Just going to throw that one out there. It's not guaranteed. I'm not saying that that's always the case. If you don't heal your scouts, you lose. However, you know, if you're monitoring the kill feed, and you haven't had a chance to heal your scouts yet because your soldiers and your demo man are just so damn hurt, then yeah, chances are you just you just lost all positioning because uh, your your heavies being that hurt like that means you just have to, you just have to keep crossbowing. You're like really far behind on heals, and unless you took like two picks at the beginning of mid, you're like in a bad spot. So this is something you need to work on in general. Is you need to know when to leave middle. I have yet to see you leave a middle. Actually, that's that's a lie. The last mid you left. But I, I want to see you lose a middle and stay alive the entire way through. Because that's a sign of a medic who knows what's up. That's a sign of a medic with good game sense. Is a medic who knows when you're losing middle, bails on his teammates, gets the last point, and keeps his uber advantage for his team. That's what I want to see. So I'm going to speed up a little bit because you guys are holding last. And looks like they're just kind of sticking your sentry gun out. That sentry gun spot I'm not a big fan of, to be honest, because of that demo man spot spamming. Uh, so what you need your roaming soldier to do is spam the right side and not give you that demo man that angle. Uh, so it looks like they know your entire setup. They know where the sentry gun is. They know you got a pyro. They know your entire team composition. So they are... Yeah, you guys are running a pyro maybe to counter the spy. That's, that's a smart move. Um, again, you don't know if they're running a sniper or not yet. I'm just not a fan of you standing still like this. Uh, because the sniper can just peek out of river. You have no pressure on river at all. There's not a single person on your team watching river. Uh, but you guys correctly read that as a, as a spy of the enemy team. I really like this uber from you. You're popping so late. This is amazing. It doesn't matter if you lost a player. You get... Oh, you're dropping your teammates though. But... Uh, actually, ah. Uh, it, it, was, it was really nice in theory. How you milked that uber and popped it on your heavy. But like, in my opinion, you gave too much of that uber to your demo man. Who didn't really do anything with it. And I'm not sure if this is just a European, European thing, so I'm just going to coach you according to North American meta, which is to say that you should not be Ubering your demo man there. Your demo man is not a close quarters combat class. He's not a cleanup class. He's not a class that needs to be close to an enemy to do damage. So in my opinion, you should have Ubered the heavy, stabilized the point. Once you realize the last point is not getting captured, turn around and start flashing your scouts and soldiers so that they can actually start getting kills and pushing you out of last. I don't think your demo man needed to take that much heals to block the point. Or that much of your uber, I should say. Um, this push out... I should really pause the game here. So, the game's moving kind of fast. I need to slow down and, and, and talk, it through, talk it through. So, after you defended last point successfully, you got some picks, and you pushed out to yard. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rewind it, actually. I, I rarely do this, but... All right, I rewound that last fight so you could see exactly where the mistake was. Um, actually, you see their spy uh, cloaking over there by the river, which is kind of interesting. 
so we're going to play it in slow motion here. So you guys are going to pop it onto your heavy, then your heavy drops down off the high ground on your demo. And you see your demo man is just blocking the point with his body. I, I, I just not a big fan of that. I, I'm fine with a player blocking the last point with his body, but I just don't think he should be a demo man. I prefer the demo man to actually sit on the top left of spawn and like spam the soldiers and scouts here from the high ground and not put himself in a dangerous situation. The person I would prefer blocking the point is a soldier because the soldier can like use his close quarter rockets to just like spam the ground and get easy kills. Whereas your demo man has to hit like pipes to actually convert that kill. So your, your heavy drop down off the high ground for... I'm not quite sure why. Like your demo man was already blocking the point, and so your heavy's kind of giving up, giving up positioning here and making it harder for himself to kill the soldier. You can have your medic block the last point here too, and not have to uh, have to do that. So your demo man's already full. Y you notice how like you're not giving any health to anybody else at all. Like your demo man was already 240. You don't need to put more heals into him. Who needs the heals? The heals aren't need to go to the soldiers. So uh, and your heavy looks totally fine here too. No one's even shooting at your heavy anymore. So, uh, yeah, and this part here, like, I'm just not a, a big fan of that. You kind of realize, like, what am I doing down here? I don't understand. Like, no, because you guys are already getting kills. You need to be pushing out of last into, into lobby. So you're already behind, is what I'm saying. You're already slow on the push out. So speeding up a little bit here, you start pushing out to lobby. You, you grab your scout with you, which is good, and you spot their soldier up in river. You're like, okay, screw this guy. I don't need to deal with him. I'm going to start capturing the second point. You look to your right, and you realize there's nothing there. So if you look to your left, and if you look to your right, you realize that there's completely open space here. You know that if you're hitting tab, because I can't hit tab on this POV demo, but you should know that there's nobody really coming to contest second point here, except for the soldier up in river above your head. So where should you position yourself for the maximum efficiency? You're asking about how do I nail down the small stuff? Well, what can you die to right now? You can die to a roamer up there, or you can die to a sniper out of big door. Your dumb man's already pressuring big door, but you still should not put yourself in the line of sight. So you need to get onto the point here as a medic here and just walk through the sight line get out of the big door sight line and just get onto the see that could have been a sniper instead of a demo man and you could have been dead right now is what i'm trying to get to so you're you're healing your demo man and i i'm not a big fan of this so i, I don't exactly know the numbers because i'm thinking to myself okay what are the numbers i think your heavy had to swap to another class so it should be four versus four i'm guessing um i right now the way you're playing you're playing in such a way that says i'm going to leave I'm, i don't think i'm gonna win this fight and i don't think that's how you should be playing if it's four on four on four on four or four on three i think you should have been playing towards the point and playing on the high ground instead so here's what i would have preferred to see you do next time you look to your right and it's clear get onto the point your demo man should not be locking down i mean he can lock down that choke but um the better choked lockdown is exactly where your crosshair is i want to see your demo man lock down that choke because that one's way easier to de deny without him having to like stick his neck out there too much and waste a lot of ammo missing. So like, I wanna see him like deny this big door area, but further back. And then I wanna see like your respawner who swapped off heavy, like get out to you on second point. And then your scout needs to get off the cap and start pressuring the big door with you. And you need to like continue getting cap time here. But like your scout needs to get off the cap and move forward. And you need to be putting heals on the scout instead. All this incremental healing that you're putting on your dome man is doing your team no good at all. Like you're building Uber, but you're not actually getting any additional health out of it. So what you need to be doing instead is get the heals onto the scout who needs the buff and then have him pressure the door out. And now what you're doing here is you're actually just conceding a lot of ground for no reason. So see your soldier just respond and he came out here, but you've lost all position because you just, you already said, fuck it. I think we lost this. And you didn't, you did not lose this yet. You already have a really good chance of winning this, but you're putting yourself in a situation where you're, get, you're getting sticky at a second point. And it's really frustrating for me to watch this because you just, you just split your team in half right now um, by, by just giving that up. So now your dumb man gets a kill. You still can't get in. Like, your dumb man did the right thing. He got the kill, but you've given up all the ground. Like the hardest part of, the, of this game is getting through choke points and you've effectively given them the opportunity to, to stick you out of a choke point when you didn't need to. You could have been playing that entire second point in so much open area for you and you're just trapped out of this. And that makes it really easy for the enemy team to split your team in half and just like walk into second point, start killing your scout who'd had no buff, start killing your demo man who sucks at defending himself because he's a fucking demo man. And... It's just like, yeah, you just lost this. But you had no reason to lose that. Like, you did, you did not need to lose that. So I think you just had, like, a really play-it-safe mentality. 
And that's why you lost. It's because you're like, eh, I think we're going to lose this, so I'm out of here. But like your entire team was not on the same page because half your team clearly thought they were going to win that. So um, I don't know why my volume isn't working, but uh, that's weird. Okay. Well, I can't hear anything right now, so we're just going to deal with that for the rest of this demo. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, guys. Uh, you'll just have to listen to the sultry sounds of my voice. Now, you know that you have uber advantage because their medic died. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure their medic died. Actually, I'm, I'm like, even if he didn't die, you were healing the entire time, and their medic had to like retreat back to forward spawn and pick up some respawners. So either way, you have, you have uber advantage here. So... I think you said that the uber counting is pretty good in general, but I would have wished that you would have pushed out to a second point here with a super advantage. Uh, so we're going to be watching some stalemating here while they build uber. And uh, yeah, I think this was an opportunity for you to push out of last year as well. I'm, I'm a big fan of pushing out of last on uber advantage unless you really feel like you're not as good as they are. But um, like if I was scrimming against Froyo Tech, for example, I might not push out of this because I'm like, eh, I don't want to lose a round. <laughs> I'm just like role playing here. Uh, not that I lost the lost the match to Fairy Tech and doing that same thing, but uh, I I just feel like if you have a advantage, you should practice like pushing out of here. Uh, this is an official match, so maybe you're playing it safe and you don't want to lose. But yeah, I just would have wished that you pushed out. Um, okay, I can hear little bits of sound. Oh, I can hear a little bit of the sound right now. Okay. So, still on last point. It's going to be like this for a while because the enemy team doesn't like to push. And it's actually like this for a long time. So, your teammates are trading frags and such. And nothing's really happening because you guys are completely turtling last point. Okay. And... <laughs> That's so creepy to hear that. Okay. Not a lot going on here. I'm and they pop Uber first. Whoa, volume's loud. All right. So they pop Uber in first. You pop Uber second. Notice, does this look familiar to you again? Like you're healing your two most defensive classes on your team. And again, I feel like you're just playing to not lose as opposed to playing to win. If you're playing to win, you should be healing classes that can get aggressive because you know that your uber is better. You need to be healing classes that can win the round for you. If you were popping uber first and you're like, ah, we're down numbers, we're going to lose this, then yes, pop your most defensive classes, stack on the point, don't let them cap, fine. But like you're popping an uber three to four seconds later than they are, that is a significantly better uber. They know they've lost. They have to back out of that, but see how they've left and you have no opportunity to chase them because you're ubering a heavy. That is, the, that is the opportunity that you're missing out on as a team. Is that, sure, you... Oh, that sucks that you lost that, actually. Um, it's just like you pop an Uber so much later than they do. I would love to see you pop on a scout and kill them with the Uber. Um, and, and what I saw instead was your... I don't know what happened to your engineer, but I guess you didn't have a scout alive to, to do that defense, to do that defensive push out of blast. And your other scout was on heavy, so. Start climbing, bro. Start climbing. Yeah. You need to be climbing, like, as soon as possible. Sorry, I keep fidgeting with the volume. It's kind of loud again. Alright. Good, good. I, again, I just think you're putting too much health into your demo, man. Your scouts were both at half health. And your demo man's at full, and you're still healing your demo man because it's safe, because it's easy. So, yeah, you need to like you're not you're not recognizing the opportunity. It's not that you're like making a massive mistake. You're just missing out on opportunity, and missing out on opportunity can be just as bad because I want you to be able to play against higher level teams and start winning. So like, how could you win against higher level teams? Well, stop putting all the heals into your demo man at mids. Um, your demo man really oh that's kind of a beef. Your demo man really doesn't need a lot of heals. He just doesn't. And don't do this. Don't do this peak thing with your face. Don't don't do that. Don't don't get in front of your teammates. This is really not good. You you risk like getting forced for no reason. Um, going back to what I was saying, just in general, in team fights in general, your demo man just doesn't need that much health. He needs like 175. That's about it. If he gets 260, that's a luxury. You can give your demo man 260 before a fight, but you don't need to give him Oh no, you dropped your scout. Oh no! 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 
Oh, get out. Get out, please. Oh. Oh, man. Yeah, and then... and Do you only have five players there? That was weird. Oh, uh -huh. um, maybe one of your teammates lagged out or something. But, yeah, you, like, lost track of where your scout was and let him die. Anyways. Um, just generally speaking, the player... I'm going to have to draw a, dry, a, draw, draw a diagram for you. I think I'm going to end this demo review here. All right, I'm going to draw a diagram for you that I think you'll find very helpful, Clint, is uh, just the general, like, flow of your team. So the player, like, let's say the, f the flow of the fight. I actually really should draw this first. The flow of the fight is going this way, okay? So let's say the person who should be in the back, let's say in this situation, is you, the medic. The person next to them is the, is the demo. Then you have, like, soldiers probably or something and like scouts okay this is typically like the flow and this is like all the enemies like all the enemies enemies so you want to keep your enemies in front of you and the person who's going to be in the front line of battle like leading the charge are your scouts your scouts will make space they'll dodge they'll create room for your team to work with your soldiers then use that space and jump onto high ground and pressure those things. They pressure, your scouts are able to look at what, who's getting hit by rockets and they hit and they, they do a lot of damage. And then your demo man, your demo man is chilling back here. Notice, your demo man is not a frontline player. He should not be right here in the front line, in my opinion. He should be back here doing damage from long range. So the problem that I'm seeing is that your entire heal beam is like right here. You just keep healing this and Who's the person taking damage? Like, who's the enemy most likely to hit? Your enemy is most likely to hit this. He's not most likely to, like, go in here and hit this. Because if he were to do that, your scout would hit this. And then it would be a 2v1. And this guy would die. So, most likely, if everything is staying in front of you like it should, the enemy will not go around two layers of players just to hit your demo man. So, what's the problem that I'm, I'm identifying for you here is that you're putting all your health into your demo man. And that's just not valuable. Your demo man needs to be at 175 in a team fight. At most, like you really don't need to put much more health into him than that. Your scouts definitely need to be at 185. Those scouts are like pawns in chess. Those scouts are like your front line. That scout is like everything to you. You need your scouts to stay alive. It's it's the way the metagame is going right now is that your scouts are the most powerful class in the game. More heals need to be going to your scouts. So I, I want to see you, instead of being all the way back here, I want to see you like here. I want to see you like here. I, I, I need to see you in a situation where, like, you're maybe on the second line, putting heals to, like, these people and these people. And that way, you're able to, like, create space for your demo man to work with. If there's an ever a time to buff your demo man, it's before the fight. So before a team fight breaks out, you need to buff your demo man a lot. That's a perfect opportunity for him to hit 260. When the fight starts, though, all heals onto scouts. And then if you have extra healing... Put it into your soldiers. And if your soldiers are jumping and not near you, then you can put in your demo man. Demo man is the last person that you heal. Uh, and, and that's just, it's just like I'm noticing the way that you're playing in general was like very safe, very conservative, very much passive. And it took me a really long time to recognize what that meant, means because I'm a passive medic myself. But you need to be not back here, but you could even be up here if you want to. It depends how good your scouts are at this game and how confident you are. Like if the enemy only has a couple players alive, then it's harder for them to jump you. Um, but if you have, if you're like on a mid fight, for example, it doesn't really look like this. The diagram gets a little bit more complicated than that. The diagram is not like it's enemies, but enemies times two, right? Because you have enemies coming from the left, which is the the big door, and you have enemies coming from the right, which is the uh, the choke. I'll draw a diagram for you just to make it easier because I want to make this super super uh, descript. So if you imagine this is like a big door, and then this is like an elbow, and this is a choke point. So it's not, I mean, okay, this is a terrible drawing because it's not drawn to scale. It really looks like this. So what you really have is uh, you have enemies coming from choke point and you have enemies coming from big door. And so your scouts aren't easily able to just block it out. It's not just a straight line like I've drawn it here with this arrow. There's two lines, right? You need to think about this line and you need to think about this line. And uh, so you really have like, your scouts don't need to worry about this big door as much because that's low ground. So if this is the midpoint right here, uh, your scouts need to be like, 
pressuring the enemy choke point. So your scouts are trying to be the front line on this way. And actually the diagram looks a little bit more like this, where uh, maybe the soldiers are here, and maybe you as the medic, I saw you playing back in choke. The problem with playing choke, though, is that enemies, if they want to, can go through your drop down, get behind you, and kill your medic. So that's why as a medic, you can't really stand there. I think one of the safest places to play as a medic on gully wash is you have your elbow. Um, let's, say, let's call this your elbow. Actually, that's not really safe. It's like, let's, call, let's call this your elbow. Like as a medic, you're climbing from your left side big door. You can climb up into your elbow, and this is really safe. Because if they come through the drop down here, they can't really pressure you as easily because you have the safety area. But you also are trapped because if you're losing middle, you can't get out. So this is one of the safest places to play at the start. But I really want to see you get out of elbow into this area right here where you can heal your scouts. I'm going to put, I'm going to put you over here just... Like, your soldiers can be bombing the nipple, they can be bombing the big door. And as a medic, I want to see you, like, up here with your scouts pressuring this top right side. That's what I really want to be seeing uh, out of your gully wash mids. And just as a general way of playing your team fights as a whole. Uh, there's just... I, I have, like, entire diagrams I want to draw about this, but I don't really have time. I hope this specific demo review was helpful for you, Clint. And I really want to see another demo from you in the future. So maybe a couple weeks from now, when you feel like you've had a chance to practice this, send me another demo, and I'm more than happy to review it and check out in your progress. But thank you guys for watching the video. Hope you guys learned something, and I'll see you guys next time.